Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Arizona Real Estate News. We've got Pat, what's my rate, McMaster's, and Jacqueline Smith with Century 21 Arizona Foothills. Ruby is not able to make it today, so this show, we're just going to talk about her for the full segment. <laughs> yeah. That's so, talk behind her tell, back. Yeah, I used to tell people. Oh, I got a lot meeting. to say then. If, if they couldn't make it to the sales meeting, I always say, well, that's okay. We'll just talk about you. So yeah, that's cool. <laughs> and we would. One time I was in New York, they uh, they just started this. It was called um, I can't remember what it was, but you could it was unheard of. It was so techy. You you could send out a group voicemail to everybody. So you just yeah. had these. So you'd make one voicemail and your entire sales team would get it called Audio Vox or something like that. And I think I remember that. So I had told people. Before we have our sales meeting, and we'd, we'd have one, you know, maybe once a month, please always check your voicemail the night before in case we have any changes. So I'd send out a message like, you know, hey, we're, um, you know, please bring this paperwork. or whatever. Mm -hmm. One time I just said, hey, um, if you come to the meeting tomorrow, don't wear a tie. This mm -hmm. way I know if you're wearing a tie, you didn't check your voice message the night before. You got my, so it was yeah. people locked in with a tie on. Everybody just busted their jobs. So it was great. But uh, but we're uh, we're going to go over just a little bit of data here. Pat's got some mortgage news. And then I thought we, I mean, you know, Jackie doesn't know yet. But, man, Pat, we have had a day. And yeah. uh, I, I thought we'd just spend a couple minutes on uh, – on what the last two days of a closing could be like, because we've got two transactions uh, hitting the books tomorrow. And I, I feel like I've just uh, run a marathon. And I know that you've uh, you've done several sprints since yesterday afternoon. So I'm going to touch on that in a couple minutes here. But let me care because I'm sitting here going, oh. <laughs> so, try, try being on my end. <laughs> oh, oh, no. It, it, and it, you know what's funny is the consumers have no clue some of the stuff we go through. On the uh, back we're gonna, end, we're going to drop a couple nuggets today. So, um, here's the interesting thing it's uh, first of all, applause, applause. My red pen is working today. We're down here at 13,313. This is last Saturday, that's when this data rolls up, right? But look how close we are to 2020 levels already, right there. And are we going to duplicate this? I hope not, because that's when I things really not. started taking off now. Right here in, uh, like, I believe that was March. This is when everybody started listing because rates went up. They said, let's grab the equity while we can. Let's grab it while we can. And what happened? Everybody signed listing agreements that were six months long. They went from <laughs> March to December 31st or, uh, or May to December 31st. And look what happened. Look at the expireds right here. Wow. So this to me illustrates that as things started to go higher in interest rates and people started listing like crazy, they hadn't got a their arms wrapped around what it was going to take price wise to move that home. And lo and behold, at the end of the year, they said, well, take it off the market, let it expire. And they and they did. But this to me really illustrates just how wild it is. But now you can see that expired listings are actually starting to go down, which is another indicator that people are getting more realistic, realistic on their pricing. And we can see that here too on the listing success rate. It's just kind of gone flat for a while. And that's pretty respectable at right up there around 78%. That's a decent listing success rate. So we're seeing that the, uh, uh, the consumer out there, or the, the, the listing agents and the sellers are, are taking a much better approach. Pat, do you have a screen to share yet there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did I? Oh, my bad. Right up there. Sorry. Um, so rates pretty much didn't do too much today. If I put this no. up just quickly for a moment, and we're seeing that they're sitting here at about 6.59 today. They were, what, 6.6 .6 yesterday. So not a whole lot going on, but there hasn't been too much news to disturb things. No, it really hasn't. I mean, <clears throat> we've been seeing it's been trading a, a um, you know, sideways motion here 
since probably March 13th, the last couple of weeks, we've been kind of seeing this is this is actually um, rates. You know, this is the 10 year Treasury. We saw a little increase. I mean, we saw it fall from, you know, 404 up here down to um, 337 within about three, yeah, about three and a half weeks, which is a huge move. And, uh, you know, we were tipping, obviously, around here. We're probably tipping around the high, low, the high sixes, low sevens. And um, we're, um, I mean, basically, uh, this is kind of interesting. This shows you right here. I'm going to show the, throw this chart up here. This is, this is the movements in, you know, the 10-year treasury, these gyrations. Right now, we're kind of stuck in this in range right here. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. But... Um, you could basically, if you just, if the average person looks at this chart, <laughs> you know, we're seeing it's a very volatile market. It's been stuck between a range of about three, three, three thirty, about four ten, and but we're seeing a gyration in that in that sideways market, and it's not staying down low for very long. It doesn't stay. You know, we're just seeing a lot of volatility. If you look at this chart, it just it shows you. The volatility, you know, I'm might trying stay to here. figure out which mouse to look at. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I bet. Yeah, I don't know what there's the only going. like 12. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what the heck's going on there. That's I'm gonna have a seizure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. one are we looking at? <laughs> well, I mean, exactly, but um, so this is a better chart, but um, so it's it's been you know what I'm trying to do is obviously if people get contracts in, um, trying to you know be smart about the market. You know, not trying to lock people here, but try to get down here, you know, wait, you know, I've been waiting a couple of weeks to lock people because here, seven a quarter, this is six and a half. That's about a $200 a month payment difference. That's you know, huge. huge. That huge difference. makes a big, big difference. So, you know, I know Rick, I mean, we've obviously cut it close with this closing, but we were waiting, obviously. Um, you know, I just tried to... Look at the time frame, you know, look at the situation and try to basically balance it out. Like, hey, if I can save a guy, you know, a five eighths of a point by waiting a week and a half or so, you know, that's what the markets obviously you saw that chart, obviously, with all the 13 different um, mouses. Um, you're seeing these little, you know, periods where it, it's down for a bit, but then we see, you know, the bonds increase and rates go down. So, I've been trying to take advantage of, you know, the short term fluctuations. And like I said, I try to pride myself on that versus a call center guy that you just call and they lock you. You get 30 day contract. OK, we're going to lock you for 30 days. Well, you know, they might be locking you at the top when three, four days later, you might have gotten a half a point lower. So I just, yeah, you know, I try yeah, to, I'm trying to use some crit critical thinking as far as that's concerned. But uh, the market itself has been sideways. We're waiting you know, it's obviously this bank, banking news, you're waiting for another bomb to drop. Um, you know, everybody's on pins and needles. I think it's going to be this way, you know, really the next couple months. Uh, are no there numbers about. coming out tomorrow, Pat, on, on inflation? Uh, yeah, PC numbers are coming out tomorrow, I believe. Yeah, I I, I believe um, this has been kind of <laughs> weird, weird week, so I apologize. I mean, kind of getting – I thought today was um, Wednesday when it's Thursday. And it's just like, okay. But um, I just it, wanted it to be over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell but, your um, story. I want to hear it. Well, let's start with the, the mortgage in since we're with Pat. And, uh, um, you know, we knew we were cutting it close. Right. And it, every transaction and Jackie, you can attest this as well. It all boils down to the last three days. Yeah. And so um the underwriters did their trick. They asked for this. They asked for that. You know, needed a letter, had a couple conditions for our client. And, uh, but then last night at nine o'clock, you find out that they're questioning his income. Yeah. Well, it went oh for the senior, went to the senior underwriter for a final sign off. And she says, why is it, you know, the two jobs they didn't, you know, they're like, he's got two jobs. I said, yeah, he does. And, um, basically it was just clarifying with the underwriter, like, Hey, um, you did not, I don't know why they didn't see it, but they, they, he works two full-time jobs basically. And, you know, the underwriter was like, how can anybody work two full-time jobs? He does. He actually does. Right. He, I got the verification employment to show, Hey, he makes X amount on this job and X amount on this job for this long. And yeah, I mean, 
last night I got that email about, you know, nine o'clock last night. I'm like, great. <laughs> but uh, this morning got on it, you know, got to my processor within about, Rick, about an hour, hour and a half. I mean, this morning. Yeah, you know, we were yep. supposed to close yesterday. So when this, yeah. so right now during all of this, when you get down to where on, on the lending end where perhaps there's a delay, everybody goes crazy on the other side. I haven't had an update where we at. You know, this has to be overnighted to, it's an open door home. The documents have to be overnighted to Georgia in order for us to record on time. And we're like, okay, we're going to need a one day. We're going to need a one day extension. We're going to close on Friday instead of Thursday. Now all the forms have to go out. The sell, yeah. buyer has to sell the ex, sign the extension, and then the the seller has to sign the extension, and then we got to send that to the title company. We got to send that to Pat, and then we sit back mornings like today and go. And I'm 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 trying not to bug Pat, but you know I just I, I send a text like you know are we clear to how are we looking? Yeah, are we you, looking? Didn't hear, you didn't hear from me because I said I said. Yeah. I told you, you didn't hear from me because I was basically, I told Jackie, I told him, I said, I'm the brain surgeon in surgery right now. Don't, <laughs> yeah. don't talk to me. I'm He's in surgery a, right now. You know, I don't want to cut, I don't want to cut the wrong vein. So just give me about an hour. We're going to get this figured out. We have about an hour, hour and a half. We got figured out and we're clear to close. So everything's good. Because at that uh, point, see, I'm getting bombarded by all parties. Oh, me and too. So, and so right. we're all, all just getting hammered. And this happens probably... 80% of the time in a transaction was yeah, the nice. seller buying another house. Uh, the seller. Uh, no, it's open door. It's empty. Oh, that's right. You said open door. Yeah. So, I mean, you have to kind so of, at least at you same. didn't have that stress on top. Yeah, of Yeah. I mean, that's the thing you kind of, you kind of, you know, balance the stress. Cause like, you know, you could have a moving truck and, you know, you could have 14 kids and five dogs and, and waiting at the front door. But uh, you know, you know, we knew that, okay, the, the house is empty. You know, the, the buyer's fine. You know, he's, yeah. you know, and um, that's the benefit of trying to close on Thursdays if a house is occupied. Yeah, uh, oh, because yeah. it's a lot easier to move the moving truck to Friday than and everybody and then getting a delay and saying, well, now we can't close until Monday. So I I always like to have that unless the house is vacant and I have a vacant house in Scottsdale. And, you know, this is the one that had the list of repairs that was longer than my truck and trailer combined. Yeah. And, and a lot of them were, were vague. And one of them said, you know, adjust the doors to latch. Okay. Well, they just needed to adjust the little trip plate, right? Right. And so yesterday was the uh, the final walkthrough. And I just knew based on the transaction that at five o'clock, that at six o'clock, my phone would ring and there would <laughs> yeah. be something. I mean, I mm -hmm. just, just wait for it. And then six o'clock, it, it rang and... Turns out in the master bedroom sink, uh, when they ran the water, it was leaking really bad under, underneath. Mm -hmm. So I got that video. And then then they sent me a video that says that the bedroom door won't stay open. And I'm like, well, it's supposed to close tomorrow. And you're you're possibly not wanting to close because a bedroom door won't stay open. And a and great agent. And I called and I said, you're just going to have to explain this to me. I mean... I didn't see in there where it said that we had to fix the door to stay open. I said, <laughs> yeah. um, it, all I saw in there was that they had the latch and they, they do, they all close. She goes, well, it, I mean, you want a door to stay open? I said, why? She said, well, she's got kids. Sometimes you want the door to be open. So you can hear, I go, put something by the door, put a shoe there. <laughs> yeah. I, I said, but I don't want to, I, I don't want to spend any time discussing that. I mean, so I said, Let's get a plumber in here to do the bathroom. She goes, what? She says, what's wrong with it? I go, I can do it. I can get down on my hands and knees, unscrew it, put a washer and screw it back. But I don't think that your client's going to accept you saying this was fixed by Rick. I said, so. <laughs> well, you are Rick helps, by the yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm not Rick the plumber. So I said, <laughs> let's, let's hire a plumber. Uh, send me the bill. I'll take care of that. And she goes, well, she's also got her handyman coming in on Monday to do all the other things long list of things that we said no to i go well have them fix the door i go yeah. I'll, I'll pay for that it's i don't know how to make a door stay open hey open i don't i don't you know i i just i was standing there looking at the hinges going what do i move through <laughs> and so and so maybe the we, house is off level well it's 1970 it could be <laughs> uh, you know i just called my client this morning and and uh, she goes are they not going to close because of this and i said I've never heard of a house not closing because a door won't 
stay open. So yeah. I said, let me, I'm driving to your house now. Let me see what's going on. And the, and the agent and I came to a quick, quick conclusion about 10 minutes, but it just added this level of stress that didn't need to be there. And, but then she told me, she goes, I, you know, final walkthrough. Um, how long does it normally take you on a final walkthrough, Jackie? Let's say it's a minutes. Two thousand square foot home. 15 minutes, maybe 20. What do you look for? Well, the first thing I look for is to make sure the repairs requested were done if there were any repairs requested. And then just the general condition, making sure it looks like it was when we went under contract. Um, we don't tear it apart. No, so 15 minutes. I know when I did uh, the one for Mac this week, is about is about 15 minutes. I, I, uh, I, I arrived before the client gets there because I check all the windows, especially if it's a vacant home, just to make yeah. sure that nobody tried to break in. So I go and check all the windows, all the doors, make sure everything's still locked and uh, make sure that there's no damage. And, uh, and it's about 15 minutes by the time the client get there yesterday with her client. She said she was there two and a half hours in what? a 1700 square foot home. That's as long as the initial inspection almost. Yeah. Yeah. An initial inspection oh, of three goodness. hours, two I and mean, a half I've, hours. <laughs> I've been there longer when the seller's there and the seller's courteous and, you know, shows how to operate the pool and how to do this and how to do that. Mm -hmm. Then I usually plan about 45 minutes because it can definitely take longer. But, but these, these, these are the kind of things that go on in the market that I don't think a lot of people hear or or see that, uh, you know, that um, and this is why it's really important that real estate agents get along with each other, because yeah. this is the time in the process when you get down to the last two days, if you've not if you've got a relationship that's a little bit aggressive, then those two days are going to blow up in your face. Now, yeah, I have seen it. So as everybody know, I, I've been doing this over 30 years. I have seen it happen more in the last two years, just in the last two years than I have my entire career. And it's I've, there's a lot of new agents that are younger that got in the business that are great. But I have seen these agents that have gotten in in the last few years that it was like they just had dollar signs on their mind. And they're aggressive as can be. They're, yes. they're aggressive from the get-go, from the moment you call to ask, is the house still available? Do you have any offers? What kind of interest are you getting? Mm -hmm. Those agents like that, they are an absolute, not, one, you can't get a hold of them. And everything, it's like they're in a battle, you know? They feel like they got to win every conversation yeah. you have. And it's so ridiculous. I always tell my clients, the very first thing I do I build rapport with the agent before I even show the house. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. I mean, it's, I mean, I've seen it from being a lender where I see the buying agent and the listing agent go at it. And oh, you know, I've had it, calls from the buying agent saying, Oh my God, I hate this listing agent. She has just got, you know, teeth and she's just mean. And she is like, we're all working together in the spirit of cooperation right? to get this thing done. And it's just like, um, you know, they make it sound dramatic where it's like, you know, they're fighting for their client. Like, you know, let's all work together. We're all working right? together. And they don't you know, help their client that way. They hurt their client that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, you know, I always, you know, you guys are not, you know, Rick, Jackie, you guys have been great. I've got a, number, a handful of other agents that are just, you know, let's not talk about the problem. Let's look at the solution. You know, right. okay. And everything, yeah, I always say, if it, you know, I always say if it wasn't for the last minute in mortgages and real estate, nothing get done. You know, there is oh, yeah. kind of this, you know, circus, you know, sometimes, you know, but, you know, in defense, like the transaction you were just talking about, Rick, I mean, obviously we were, we were kind of close the last week and a half because you didn't find out in an addendum whether we were going to get a concession or not. You know, that's why we were kind of close also yeah, there, too, yeah. because uh, you didn't know if he was going to get all the ducks in a row. So Yeah, we, we were waiting for the, the client with the seller to get, you know, were they going to come down in price? Because basically, and they finally came down in price. It was a very short period ago that they came down in price. And that's when I, I mean, I didn't want to get the ball rolling until and lock the loan and all do that stuff until we found out, is he going to actually buy this house? Cause if they didn't get the $20,000 concession, he was probably going to walk away. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. and then, but then you made the good strategic decision to wait a couple days cause you saw where rates were headed and that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, we, we, we knew it was going to be tight, but I, I really didn't expect like a, you know, the nine, but, the 9 PM hit. And I'm glad you didn't send me a text. Yeah. Um, no. I, you know, I, 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 I just, like you know, there's so no there's reason I was going to send you a text, but I'm like, there's nothing that can be solved at 9, 8, 9 p.m. at night. Let's just wait till the morning. Let's just, you know, 
Oh, I so. was repairing a sink in my dreams last night, but um, <laughs> I got that and, uh, and I had no skills. But Jackie, you, um, you, you know, we've got a listing coming up now, and you're listed to coming soon. And gosh, you're already getting calls on it. And it yeah, it kind of illustrates that the market is is not as dead as Channel 12 News and everybody else says it is. It's no, I had two I put in yesterday. One uh, went active, went live. Uh, I had two inquiries this morning on it. And um, that one's priced at four ninety seven five, and then the one at Thirty uh, Eighth Street and Greenway on Hillary, yeah, I put it as coming soon last night at about eight thirty, and I've got an agent asking for interior photos, which unfortunately we can't provide right now because they're doing, they're they're uh, replacing the carpet and just doing a couple extra little, you know, wowsies to make it really pop when we hit the market, but yeah, I mean. It everybody I'm talking to, even the other agents, they're busy. Yeah, it's um, um, and Phoenix is still going well, and Chandler Gilbert is is getting pretty, pretty, pretty brisk as we saw in the Cromford market. Then, and then the question we get is who's buying and who's selling these houses? And guess what? There's an article on Market Watch that says, uh, who's selling their homes in this uncertain housing market? The same people who are buying houses more than anyone else baby boomers. Mm. There is a trend where we're selling our homes to be closer to our kids and the yeah. grandkids. And that is going on at a pretty large scale. Mm -hmm. I, I'm also I seeing a lot of people. Too. I'm also seeing a lot of people being relocated here recently. Yeah. Yeah. So I would well, say almost 50% of my clients right and now. Grandkids, if you move to be next to your kids and grandkids and they get promoted and move again, do you move again? <laughs> you you wouldn't have wanted to follow me. <laughs> I, I moved five times in my career. So, you know, yeah. well, I mean, I, on my side, I just talked, I was talking to an agent um, who was up in Anthem. She said, I don't, maybe it was one, I don't know, was you Jackie or somebody? I, somebody I was talking to, I can't remember who, but they said there was a house up in Anthem that got like 40 offers. No, not me. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she's like, yeah, there was like 40 offers, you know, so it's, I'm seeing it to be a very segmented market. You know, there's pockets of, uh, that's what I'm seeing. Uh, you know, from my my take is that the, you know yeah. the pocket. You know, there's it's not one type of entire market. It's just very. It's very micro. Yeah, well, very Anthem micro. is getting hot because of the Taiwanese chip plant. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Anthem, yep. which used to be way out there. Uh, in fact, we had a guy that uh, uh, lived in Anthem and worked in uh, in uh, Tempe. And uh, whenever he left, I said, "Have a nice drive to Flagstaff," and. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, because Anthem was always just way out there. But now if yeah. you're working at the Taiwanese plant, you're living in Anthem, that's just a short jaunt down the road. So, yeah. So well, people and, are recognizing it. and speaking of that, too, so we just put one under contract in Sun City, not the old part of Sun City. Um, out like it's a, it's brand new. It's built in 2021. Uh, was it Sun City or North Peoria, North Peoria, but way out there, 131st Avenue and uh, Deer Valley. <laughs> but it, the guy has a job at the new chip factory and it's that 303 makes it so easy. It's a 15 minute drive and there's no yeah. traffic on it. So I've seen a lot of people that North Peoria, Sun City, even people working at the chip factory, moving into that Sun City area, the newer part, Grand and West, because you jump right on the 303, 10, 15 minutes, you're there. Yeah, yeah, it's a very interesting market. So we'll see where it takes yeah. us. Pat, we're going to be on tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be leaving on a trip tomorrow afternoon. I'm going to meet some friends in Las Vegas and uh, go to a concert. And uh, so we won't be on at 3 o'clock on Friday, probably 8.30 or 10.30-ish, somewhere mm -hmm. in that in that ballpark. So we can dive into a little more detail on what we're seeing and see if anything changes tomorrow. And uh, Ruby should be back to join us Next week, I don't have anything major going on then, but we'll continue to watch the market. Until then, everybody, have a fabulous, fabulous day. Take, Take care. care. Bye-bye.